Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2017 Toyota Tacoma, we're going to be showing you how to install the Rhino Rack roof rack system. But before we get into that, let's just take a couple of minutes, check this out, and make sure it's going to work for you. So this particular system is going to be designed uh, for the Tacomas that have a naked roof or uh, you know no factory rails installed at all. Um, if yours has something like that, be sure to use our fit guide and there's definitely going to be an option or a solution for you. But with that said, what our neighbor did here today, uh, he was looking for something a little more permanent in terms of having a roof rack. So uh, prior to these, he had uh, a different style that would actually kind of clamp to the sides there and just wasn't really too crazy about it. You know, um, a lot of people that end up putting roof racks on tend to just leave them on and uh, it makes sense. Um, and that's what he was looking to do. And, and with this setup, it's just a little more cleaner um, and more of a factory type option, at least in my opinion. I think that's uh, kind of the look it puts off. But with that said too, you know, since it's not just, you know, since the system isn't just clamped on, it's actually bolted to the roof, this thing is gonna be really secure. Having a roof rack system up here though is really going to help to uh, open up your opportunities on what you're going to be able to do with your Tacoma. Um, you know, these aren't a full size truck so you don't have a ton of space to work with and these are really popular. Uh, you know, people go out and, and, you know, have fun with them and do a lot of different things with them. So, you know, whether you're trying to use uh, a kayak carrier, uh, a roof box, a roof basket, maybe a bike rack set up up here, uh, skis, snowboards, all types of different things, this is gonna allow you to do that. And even, you know, I see a lot of these Tacomas uh, being used as work trucks. Um, and so what you can use in conjunction with this is let's say a ladder rack, right? You got a ladder rack on the back. Um, you know, like I said, they're not very big trucks, they're not super long. A lot of times you can set them ladder racks up to where you know, you can have a longer ladder come up and, and support it, you know, using the roof rack. So um, the possibilities are endless. One of the things um, as well with this, with these crossbars at least, is the shape of them. So they're relatively low profile and what that's going to help with is helping to reduce that wind noise. You know, a little more aerodynamic, cut through that air a little bit better and you won't hear them as much as uh, some of the other types, you know, the round or square ones, uh, whenever you're driving down the road. So our Tacoma is equipped with the sunroof and I know I was kind of curious if it would be able to just kind of go up into that vented position without hitting the rack and the answer is yes. So that's it all the way open as far up as it'll go and doesn't have any clearance issues. Um, it is kind of close though. I can get my hand underneath there. So just something to think about. Um, I know some type of roof mounted accessories use clamp on style. Um, so like I said, just think about that. If, if you have a clamp on style and that clamp's pretty thick, you might just want to be careful and pay attention if you do decide to vent your sunroof uh, whenever you have that accessory on. Now, as far as opening the sunroof, let um, me hop down here. There's no issues at all with that uh, because it kind of just slides right into the roof almost. So definitely no interference. And uh, even if you have a clamp on style accessory, uh, more than likely you should be able to completely open it up uh, like we did just now. As far as how high these are going to sit above the roof, they're actually pretty low profile. Um, so I'll just go right in the middle here, at least on the front. Push that down. It's going to be about three and one eighths of an inch. So not really taking up a whole lot of space. And you know, that can be useful if let's say maybe you're putting a roof basket or a, a roof box up here and you want to load it all up before you hit the road and be able to pull into your garage at night or something. Um, you know, you can use that in conjunction with the, the height of that box or basket or whatever to help figure out, you know, is this going to clear my garage or, or have any clearance issues. With these being fixed, you know, they're directly bolted down to your vehicle. You're not going to be able to adjust the crossbar spread. And so you kind of get what you get. Um, and that can matter sometimes depending on, 
you know, what type of accessories you, you end up wanting to put up here. Some of them want them to be a certain width or within a certain parameter or something like that. So just kind of gave you something to work with. Um, if you go from the center to the center, that's going to be right at 28 inches. So honestly, that's usually right in the money for um, uh, just about all the types of accessories. You know, it's a pretty good number there. And I mentioned those clamp-on style ones, which you can use, but this also has a T-track in it. So you peel these little guys out here, that's where you can put your T-track accessories. So if it's something that you know you're gonna keep up here or use a lot or it's only one, and you can put them up there, get them positioned how you want, and then you can always trim these pieces and uh, you know trim around them and pop them back in there just to help keep everything kind of sealed up and, and uh, help keep that wind noise down a little bit. These are going to be available in a couple of different colors as well. So uh, we have the black ones here today, which I personally like. Um, I think they would match just about any vehicle on the road. Um, but there's some silver ones too. Uh, so if, you know that's what you're looking for. They're definitely available. But you know, aside from that, at the end of the day, uh, a roof rack system that. I actually like, you know, it's super solid. It's not going anywhere. You don't have to deal with trying to set up these temporary brackets and all this stuff. Um, and although the initial install is a little more time consuming, uh, it's worth it. You know, especially if you plan on using this a lot because you won't have to deal with any of that stuff in the future. Um, but kind of speaking of the installation, definitely time consuming. It's not so much that it's really complicated per se, uh, the part that I probably had the most trouble with is just trying to figure out what to do at the very beginning, you know. So once you kind of figure out how to set one of them up, the rest are much easier. You know, it gets easier as you go on. So uh, hopefully, you know, our install video can get you going in the right direction and give you a little guidance, make it easier on you. If I had to give one pointer, though, make sure you got sharp drill bits because uh, where you drill into this channel here, the metal is, is really solid. Um, so drill slow and uh, you know try not to burn up your bits. But if uh, you plan on putting this on yourself, feel free to hang around. We'll go ahead and get started on it now. To begin your installation, not a bad idea just to kind of lay out all your parts and pieces, make sure you got everything, kind of um, organize them, you know. But what we're going to have to do on the roof, there's going to be a piece of channel that we can pull out and um, and that's because these are going to have to get mounted to the roof of our vehicle and those will provide us with attachment points that way we can mount eventually these pieces to it followed by these so i just wanted to kind of give you a visual here and, and uh what we're going to be dealing with we're going to be working right on top of our tacoma uh, i like to put painters tape kind of around it that way we don't actually scratch paint or anything like that while we're working but we could have our uh, rubber piece that we need to pull out our weather stripping really nothing to it just at the end here carefully take a screwdriver sometimes you can even grab it with your hand and this is just going to peel up completely and we'll work it all the way off and, and get it out of our way. And set it to the side. In this ditch, this opening where weather stripping was, that's where our ditch brackets are going to sit and eventually get uh, secured down into there. So. Uh, I referenced our instructions on the measurements that we need to take. So you'll measure from the top of the windshield glass, you know, back, put a mark, and then, you know, continue on to that second measurement and put a mark. Um, really helps if you have a metric tape measure. Uh, it just makes it a little easier, but it can be done with the standard one. Um, just, uh, you'll have to pay a little bit more attention there to get it spot on, but, you know, find them put the reference marks and then we can kind of go from there. With our marks made, uh, you know, the center hole there in the ditch bracket, that's going to be centered on that mark. And just to try to help keep everything constant, um, I have a 1364 drill bit. Um, it's just over a quarter inch size that I'm gonna lay here and kind of butt it up to it. That way we can have a constant. You know, if you do this for every one, it's pretty much splitting the difference and getting this centered exactly. 
Uh, if you do this for every one, we know that they'll all be the same. You know, so I think that'll help out a little bit. But I'll get that centered up and you can mark out the three holes there. Get our drill bit, um, and if you have one of these stopper collars, you can put that on. You know that way you don't drill completely through. Uh, just be careful if you don't. Um, but we're gonna drill out our holes here. So I like to start with the one in the middle and kind of go from there. And this is a uh, really hard steel, so drill, uh, drill slow and apply some good pressure to it, and just take your time. Once you get that middle hole drilled out, what I like to do is just take one of the huck rivets that they give you and just kind of put that in there because sometimes when you're drilling, you know, it might get knocked off course just a little bit and so I just like to use it as a reference here. So it looks like we're in, in pretty good shape. So I'll go ahead and get this one drilled out, do the same thing, check it, and finally this, this last one. Once you get all three of them drilled on out, uh, you know, you want to put some type of protective paint or something over that bare metal. So I got a little primer uh, stick thing here that I will push in there, get a layer on it, and uh, you know, once I get this done, we'll give it a few minutes to dry, and then we can come back and uh, get ready to secure our bracket. So I'll give that a few minutes to dry, and now we can put on this butyl tape uh, here. And what I like to do, the center of it, just take one of the rivets that they give you, push that through, clear out that hole, and then peel off one side and just simply stick this down, lining up the hole in the butyl tape. The holes that we drilled, and this will just kind of help keep everything sealed up and uh, prevent water seeping in and, and stuff like that. Go ahead, grab your ditch bracket again, and take the huck rivets, and I just like to you know, push all three of them into place so it kind of holds where it needs to. And you're going to want to use a rivet gun. I'm, I got a pneumatic one. Uh, I'd assume you could use a regular handheld one too. Let's see why not. What you're going to do is go ahead, get all these uh, rivets hooked. At this point, you can take the mounts here, and um, I like to use this little rubber gasket. I don't think you absolutely have to, but I don't really see why you want it. Because it will kind of help, one, look better, especially once you get the rest of the leather stripping back on, and help kind of keep everything sealed up. So pop that on, and then you're going to have two bolts that are going to secure this. I have this type of bolt here. And you will put on a split lock washer and a flat washer. And they even give you the special tool that you'll need. So what I like to do is kind of get it pushed through there. And get them started. Sometimes they're kind of hard to find, you know, so make sure when you're turning this you're not cross running it. Don't force it. If you feel it start, you know, Get it, a, get it going a turn or two. And then go to the, start the other one there. So you got this completely secured, nice and tight. In the center there you can take this nice little rubber stopper. And that just kind of pushes into place. Then you can grab uh, this part, and if you unlock it, <coughs> you have these two red handles, and when you squeeze them in, you can see these end pieces kind of coming with them. 
So hold that in. Actually, it looks like you squeeze them in, you can kind of push forward, actually, and it holds it in like that. But you'll line that up. And that will snap into place, like so. We'll just uh, put the cover back on. With this one done, what you're going to do is repeat you know, that exact same process, not only for the one in the back, but for the two on the other side of our truck as well. So we'll have you know, uh, all four corners completed uh, before we worry about getting our crossbars on. Once you get all the corners set up uh, where we're going to attach our crossbars, we can get these going. So pull the end cap off, there'll be a little key stashed in there, and these pieces which will eventually go on the bottom. In case you're wondering, this is the top side where it's labeled. This will be facing up towards the sky. Um, and, then, and then inside of here, there should be some strips, and with these, you're just going to place them into the tracks and kind of fill them all the way. And so, what kind of a trick I figured out, if you take some soapy water, spray them down real good, and kind of get this started. like let's say about halfway here and then I kind of peel up maybe an inch or two on that end it gives you something to grab onto and you can just work that you know all the way down to the other end there so it's at the edge and I'm just going to do that same thing until these will be completely full. They usually give you extra, so you might have to trim one to length to fit at the very end there, but, uh, you know, really nothing to it. Got that, uh, you know, rubber strip, ran all the way down there, and take off the other end cap, and we should be ready to actually get this in place now. So the way this is going to work, you can see on these parts here, uh, there's going to be this square nut, I guess you'd call it, with a bolt coming through, and then there's kind of this guide or this track. So if you look at our crossbar, you know, those divvies there are going to kind of ride in that groove, and then this square piece is going to sit inside of here, and that way when you tighten it up, it's going to draw the crossbar down to this. So just to kind of make this easier to see what's going on, I'm going to remove this just so we can show you. You can definitely do it. You can get to the bolt from down here, but like I said, we'll just show you what's going on. That's the uh, bolt that you're going to be working with. So just loosen it up. You don't have to do it all the way. You just want it enough to where, you know, the crossbar to be able to slide in there. So we'll just do it like this. Actually, you can definitely do this with this on still, but why not? So that'll slide in like that. Alright, and then put this back on. Right, just like that. We're not going to tighten that uh, nut or that bolt just yet. We want to do the same thing on the other side of our vehicle and that's so we can still have this adjustability. You know, we can work from side to side. So I'll get that one done, same exact way, and uh, we can go from there. If you have both of the sides started, uh, how I showed you, you could slide it, you're going to want to find the proper amount of overhang. You know, how far is this piece going to overhang from this? And not really much to it there. You just want to split the difference and have it be the same on each side. Um, so I like to find, you know, find that point. And then if you have a uh, square like this, 
find it really useful. You know, you can kind of just quickly check like that, lock it down, then check the other side, and you'll never really lose that spot. So it kind of you know, makes it easier on you. So I got it squared away, and then that Allen key that was under here, just tighten it down, and that's what's going to lock that in place and prevent it from moving. And from there, if you remember those pieces that we uh, had removed and held onto, you're just gonna cut those length to slide into the bottom tracks, you know, so. Everyone, uh, you know, it's just something you'll just kind of have to do by feel, at least that's how I do it. And these ones are actually a little bit easier to go in than the ones on the top, a little different material. Get that covered up flat, obviously do the same thing, the other end of it. And then uh, if you did take this stuff apart, go ahead and put it back together. And finally the end caps here. And so with our front one done, going to do this exact same process for the rear crossbar. So once you're uh, all put together, uh, what you can do is take your original weather stripping and cut it the length. You know, I just hold it up and kind of eyeball the length. And my thought is trim it longer than you need, a little bit longer, and you can always trim it down to kind of fit perfect. But uh, with this stuff, it just kind of snaps, snaps right back into place. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Rhino Rack roof rack system on our 2017 Toyota Tacoma.